Okay, so let's have a look at Sweet Basil. Now before we do, I just want to show you how far you've come because now we're going to tie it all together and because at the start of the course, you probably knew that lavender had calming properties. You may or may not have known that spike lavender was not so calming, um, but you probably knew it was calming, just true lavender. Um, I doubt whether you knew why it was coming. So if I was to ask you, so why is lavender so calming? You go, well, I don't know, it's a calming essential oil, right? Now you know. You know because of the research, the studies, the evidence sh has shown that linalool and linalool acetate are both uh, pain relieving, uh, anesthetic, analgesic. They are extremely calming. They're great for fighting off germs and fungus. Um, and they're sedating. So you know those properties when they're rich in a certain essential oil, like sweet basil, you know that because you know the characteristics, the therapeutic properties of the chemical components, you now know what it's going to be, the, the overriding effects of that oil. For example, sweet basil. Now, chemical family, monoterpenols. Now you remember them, well, you may or may not remember, but the monoterpenols are generally considered skin safe. The only one that we had in this course was peppermint because it's a potential irritant. Otherwise, they're really good for long-term skin safe oils. Right, because you know the phenols are highly irritant. So like clove bud, cinnamon leaf, okay? Now, so let's have a look here. We have got a majority, the, the, it's um, linalool up to 60% almost, okay? So you know now that basil, just by looking at this, you know that this basil, remember this is the linalool chemotype, um, is going to be very calm, it's gonna be great for pain relief. So it's gonna be great when it comes for a relaxation massage with a person that's got pain or stress and tension. So you know because of these properties. You can see here it's got the phenol eugenol. If you remember eugenol, that's like 90 plus percent in clove bud and cinnamon leaf. It's a phenol, so highly irritant, but we've only got a small amount in here, anywhere between nine and 15 roughly percent. And we've got some 1,8-cineol. Okay, it's only a little bit, but we'll still have an effect. Now remember 1,8-cineol is great, is otherwise known as eucalyptol. Um, and it's great for respiratory conditions. So let's have a look here. So if we go down here, okay, so you see, thanks to linalool, you've got analgesic, and in part, eugenol and 1,8-cineol, but mainly linalool, um, analgesic, anti nociceptive anti-inflammatory. So you know it's gonna be great for pain, and it's calming, it's a calmative, it's a sedative. So really, really good. Now, basil is also um, uh, antispasmodic, so it's great for coughs and colds, especially spasmodic cough. Okay, so as you can see here, I've given you some suggestions for blending. Now, it's not blend with all of them. It's just like, just to give you an idea, like, okay, so we've got this, and you could obviously, if you know your, your components and what you wanna do with your, your blend, you can disregard them, but I've just given you some ideas. Okay, so look at the res respiratory. Now, once again, so, okay, if you want to blend basil, you can blend it with a pinene, alpha pinene rich oils, d limonene rich oils, 1 8 cineol rich oils, okay? The firs, the spruces, which are high in aopinene, um, your pines, um, your eucalyptus, your spike lambdas, 1 8 cineol rich oils. So you see, see how you, it all sort of comes together now. And of course, when I've got emotionally here, and you can see here. Now, um, right at the end here, because of the eugenol content, um, it says here, um, if it's 15%, and this once again is why you, uh, it's you know, important to look at the GCMS reports, because um, Robert Tisserin suggests no more than 3% if the eugenol content is up around 15%, because it's gonna be a little bit more irritating. It, it has the, the uh, potentially more irritating. If it's 15%, then a 3% maximum of this oil. Okay, so that is sweet basil. And as we go through these essential oils, um, You'll just, I'll, I'll show you, just by looking at the components, without even near knowing the name, you're going to now know what therapeutic properties, regardless of what that oil is, but just by simply looking at the components. How cool is that?